Maar wat gebeurt er als onze frontale hersenkwalben niet wijs raken uit onze gevoelens? Kunnen we dan nog betekenis geven aan wat er om ons heen gebeurt of gevaar aanvoelen dat uit het niets lijkt op te duiken? Christina Buffy heeft haar hele leven al problemen met het beoordelen van andermans bedoelingen. Ze voelt gewoon niet aan of mensen al dan niet betrouwbaar zijn. Haar intuïtie laat haar op dat vlak in de steek. When she was living on her own, she would speak to people on the street that were construction workers and tell them her life story and um, she would invite people to her apartment that she didn't really know and she'd have um, cameras stolen and different things. I've made a lot of mistakes with my judgment and I've always wondered why. Okay, Christina, we're going to start with the task now. Just remember when you see the target to press button one uh -huh. and for any other stimuli to press button two. Are you ready? Christina werd uiteindelijk doorverwezen naar het Toronto's Baycrest Center, dat zich specialiseert in afwijkingen aan de frontale hersenkwabben. Daar werd bevestigd dat haar jarenlange epileptische aanvallen een deel van haar frontale hersenkwabben aangetast hadden. When you did have problems with judgment, tell me wh how that happened. Like, and did, was it because you were just distractible or you didn't care or, or, or how did you feel when you made a bad judgment? Tell me about it. Um, <laughs> people seemed to come out of the woodwork where I was concerned. Um, it's usually because I don't want to hurt somebody's feelings <laughs> at the beginning and where I should actually tell them where to go. And then I find myself in too deep. Jonge kinderen hebben geen controle over hun emoties. De verbinding waar langs het limbische systeem signalen stuurt naar de frontale hersenkwabben is bij hen nog niet helemaal ontwikkeld. Bij Christina zijn die verbindingen beschadigd. Zij heeft haar emoties daardoor niet in de hand en kan er ook moeilijk betekenis aan geven. I have gone through many learning the hard way. The reason for emotions is they tell you what's good or bad. In the past, if you've learned something, you just say, whoa, that's bad. I'm not going to do it again because your emotional reactions would say, not a good thing. But she clearly isn't picking up on those. She, it's as if it's a new situation and she just responds. Judgment is impaired on the basis, first of all, of her intellectual, intellectual meaning the frontal lobe thinking processes. But it's also impaired because she's not getting the proper feedback from her emotional sense. We also see that sometimes when her emotion is triggered, there often is no tempering mechanism. There's no thermostat. It just goes. When we were watching um, the talented Mr. Ripley, mm. I don't know if people here have seen it. Mm -hmm. Have you seen it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have seen it. That's yeah, very, very yeah. he has some very barbaric mm -hmm. behavior. Mm -hmm. what I and very, the, the movie wasn't at all what I expected. I thought Same it was going to be a love triangle. Yeah. And uh, I was going to have when he clobbers comedy. this guy, <coughs> mm -hmm. I <laughs> just broke out laughing his <laughs> Because he clubbered the guy? Yes. <laughs> What's so funny about that? <laughs> <laughs> Is it the way he did it or what? <laughs> I have a very good delete Maybe it's your that problem. Maybe it's <laughs> I start laughing, 
I can't stop. <laughs> it's a relief, I think. No. Your frontal lobe filters <laughs> whether when it's appropriate to use your emotions, such as laughter mm -hmm. or depression or, or sadness or mourning, and when it's not, and like how to use it or when to use it and to what extent to use it. Mm -hmm. And this happens to me quite often. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think her emotions are triggered easily, sometimes. Mm -hmm. The right part of the frontal lobe is, to me, the most fascinating part because it's important for understanding discourse, irony, sarcasm. It appears to be important for what we call theory of mind, this ability to take a perspective of somebody else for me to understand you. Not, not all kinds of humor. So you can have right frontal lobe damage and people will get the sarcastic humor, but they won't understand the subtleties of humor. Onze frontale hersenkwabben stemmen onze gedachten en onze gevoelens op elkaar af. En nergens blijkt dat meer dan in een comedy club. Dolphins. I had a chance to travel all across Canada this year, ladies and gentlemen, and I can tell you, this is the question on everyone's lips here in our bilingual country. Do French people think the song We Are the Champions is about mushrooms? De onlogische en onverwachte wending van een grap maakt ons aan het lachen. Because that could be confusing to a French person. No, some les champignons. He's crazy, that Freddy. He's fungus. <laughs> I don't mean to brag, I'm sorry, I just got this watch, I'm excited. I can go 200 meters below the water with this watch. I'll know exactly what time it is and my head explodes and I think that's important. Donald Stas and his colleagues underwierpen an aantal vrijwilligers aan een reeks tests over humor. What bleek is that the mens een grap in zijn rechter frontale kwap verwerkt. Maar als dat deel van de hersenen beschadigd is, wordt het moeilijk om de onderliggende betekenis van een grap te begrijpen. Als mensen met zo'n hersenletsel gevraagd werd een passende pointe voor een grap te kiezen, bleken ze een voorkeur te hebben voor de meest logische wending. 200 meters below the water with this watch. I know exactly what time it is when I'm swimming. Om humor te begrijpen is er een complexe wisselwerking nodig tussen denken en voelen. Een grap begrijpen is niet alleen een individuele ervaring, maar ook een die we vaak met anderen delen. Get on with it, you're right, okay. Het verlangen om het gezelschap van anderen op te zoeken zit in de mens ingebakken. Misschien komt het juist hierdoor dat onze frontale hersenkwabben zich ontwikkeld hebben. Deze kwabben nemen een derde van onze hersenen in en zijn bij de mens veel groter en meer ontwikkeld dan bij enige andere primaat. Volgens Donald Stuss namen onze frontale hersenkwabben in omvang toe toen onze voorouders begonnen samen te leven in grotere sociale groepen. The size of the frontal lobe, the evolutionary development and the development of a child, all strongly suggest that the frontal lobes are key to what defines us as humans, to make the appropriate judgments, to live in appropriate harmony with others, to understand and be sympathetic to others, to judge appropriately, to be open and accepting, that all of those follow with the frontal lobe development. <laughs> 